Hello friends, welcome to a video I'm going to try out that is basically what you want to be focusing on from start to end on a typical run in Oxygen Not Included, specifically the base game and specifically on the starter asteroid. So I'm just going to go through it, this is going to be clips from my full walkthrough in here just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, but this is going to be hopefully a video that you can consult when you're playing to know what your next focus ought to be without needing to go through an entire long series if you don't have the time for something like that. So, I don't know how this is going to go, but let's give it a try. Alright, first things first, just barely spawning in. The biggest thing you need to worry about when you first start off is making sure that your duplicates can work and live comfortably. Um, the very first thing that they're going to start needing is going to be uh, outhouses and a bed. So those two things you'll definitely want. Shortly after that, you're going to want to get your power, uh, your oxygen up, and also your research station so that you can get started on researching some of the later game techs and also your oxygen just so your duplicates can breathe reliably. So you need to always kind of keep in mind that your duplicates are going to need reliable food, reliable oxygen, and also not be put in hazardous situations where they get killed or something like that. So. This is just going to be the start of that, so just kind of think about what they need right off the bat. Secondly, they're going to need to have some kind of reliable food source. So I mentioned that you need consistent oxygen and you need consistent food. You can dig around the map a little bit to find some food on the map, but eventually that's going to run out and you're going to have to grow your own. So the first thing I would start with is mealwood. This only requires dirt. We're not going to stay on it for too, too long, but that's definitely what you want to get going. You also want to make sure you don't overmake it. If you're making too much food, you're going to want to kind of pare down a little bit so you're not wasting it. It's also pretty handy to turn this into some pickled meals also, just so that they last a little bit longer. Um, it takes a little bit of extra dupe time, but by this point you should probably be looking at about maybe four or five dupes, something like that. One of them can be specialized in cooking. Uh, so yeah. Next part, we're just going to be talking about kind of exploring the starting area. Um, a lot of players that I see you playing just kind of get stuck in their little area to start off with, but you should be very aggressive about expanding because, like it says on the left, resources don't really do anything if you don't use them. So there's a lot of useful stuff in this starting biome that you're going to want to grab. So get out there and uh, get it. Alright, next you're probably going to want to get your coal power up. This is just going to be a power source that doesn't require your duplicates to waste time running on the hamster wheels. For right now, your duplicates will have to load the generators with coal every once in a while, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. As long as you're continuing to expand and continuing to progress, it should be totally fine. Alright, number five. You're probably going to want to start using your polluted water, and specifically it'd be a good idea to use your polluted water for oxygen. So this is going to be where you want to put down some deodorizers, get access to all the random pockets of polluted water that are on the map. And if you just can find a good way to get all that polluted water to gas off, which it automatically will, you can turn it into polluted oxygen, and then your deodorizers can just turn that into breathable oxygen for your duplicates. And that'll eliminate the need for you to continue to produce oxygen from algae, and you can produce it from a lot more abundant resource, which is polluted water. Next, I really recommend that you find your ice biome. Uh, the ice biome is going to be super handy for a lot of different reasons. It can be used for cooling if you're having a hard time with that. But the biggest thing it's going to be handy for is all the sleep meat that's going to be inside there, which is a really powerful natural food source that your duplicates can just go grab every once in a while when it's ready. And between that and the other food source that we're going to talk about in just a second, you can basically stay on this for the rest of the game. So finding your ice biome and getting in there quickly is a good idea. All right, and like I alluded to, Berry sludge is OP. You want to start your berry sludge. All this requires is two ingredients. It requires your bristle blossoms and it requires your sleep wheat. So you just need those two ingredients to make berry sludge and the best thing about this is that it never rots. So you will not have to worry about overproducing this at all unless you're starting to have uh, too much food rot from like the base ingredients. So yeah, get on the berry sludge because it's a really powerful food source. Next, I would recommend digging to the top of the map. The reason you're going to want to do this is so that you can start venting stuff into space that you don't want. And by this point, we haven't really talked about cleaning out your carbon dioxide. That's because if you get enough space out in the uh, starter biome, 
then you should have enough space for your carbon dioxide just to kind of settle at the bottom. But we do need to eventually get rid of it, and I would much rather blow it into space instead of using any of the other things that you could potentially deal with CO2, only because they're going to have annoying byproducts and stuff like that that we don't really want to deal with yet. All right, next. Uh, like we just mentioned, since you dug to the top of the map, you're going to want to get your base ventilation going. Uh, the base ventilation is going to be really useful to get all the gases out of there that you really don't want. It can also be used to store some of the gases that you might like to keep. So in spaced out especially, this can be really important to keep carbon dioxide around for rocket fuel. But also keeping chlorine around for a couple setups can be really handy too. So get this thing up. Next, you're probably going to want to start your shipping network. Um, I'm going to really rail on this a few more times, but duplicate time is a really valuable resource and the more that you can keep your duplicates doing valuable things the better and if i have duplicates that are just running stuff from bin to bin all the time that's not very valuable use of their time so shipping network is something that's really important that i would say is going to save you enough time that you can expand really easily later in the game so that you're not taking two three times as long to do things and running out of resources because you don't get there fast enough all right next Remember that coal power that we talked about? Yeah, we're going to need some hatches to keep this thing going. So ranching is something I would start to recommend at this point because you will have your shipping network up. So feeding them and resupplying them should not be that big of a deal. And also, once your hatches start eating the materials that you don't want, which the only two things I'd really recommend is sandstone and sedimentary rock. Um, and also alluded to on the uh, overlay here, I tend to stick with the regular hatches and the stone hatches. You can mess around with the other ones if you want to, but these are the most reliable ones, I think. But yeah, you're just basically going to take some kind of useless building material and turn it into coal and keep your base powered for a long time. Next, you need to probably start thinking about solving your long-term dupe morale. This is only because your duplicates are going to need to have more morale to support them getting specialized a little bit more further into their skill tree. So this is definitely something that you're going to want to take care of right around this point because this is when you start getting deeper into the tree for some of the more specialized duplicates. This will probably happen around maybe cycle 70 or 80 where you're going to start thinking about giving them a better place to eat or a better place to sleep or some other buildings that will help them out or rather rooms that will help them out like bathrooms and that kind of stuff. All right, next. I'm going to say start to create a cool water bank and what this really means is just to create an area of water that will be collected from all the different sources that you're going to want to get from the map. Eventually you will want to have a lot of water flowing in and out of here, but one of the early cooling solutions is going to require a good amount of just clean regular water, uh, which we'll cover in just a second. But uh, this is the part where you start want, want to start worrying about your longer term renewable resources and water is one of the easier ones, or rather one of the more common ones to start uh, taking care of. And then like I alluded to, ice powered cooling system is what I would recommend for this point because it's likely with all the stuff going on your base, especially with your uh, things producing power, uh, your coal generators, and the area around your food might be under threat due to heat. So creating a really simple ice powered cooling system is going to be very valuable at this stage of the game. All right, next, I'm going to put this as its own step only because in the base game, this is actually pretty valuable to help you turn the corner into getting your natural gas setup going. But there's a couple of places on the map where there's just steel stuff that's sitting around. You can go deconstruct it and get that so that you can start natural gas. You could also manufacture the steel yourself at this point, but salvaging it from other, some of these other buildings, and especially because you've ideally been digging so much, this should be accessible. I'd say just go get it right now and we'll worry about producing steel a little bit later. All right, the next thing I would recommend is harvesting your natural gas. Like I mentioned in the previous step, you will need steel to do this, so that's what's really important to go grab those little quantities of steel that are around the map. But the way you can view some of these natural gas geysers is once you have them captured, it's basically just a free resource that's gonna reproduce all the time. So we might as well just take this and turn it into power. And because we're gonna start running some more heavy duty machinery from this point on, this is really something that you wanna get up pretty soon to help supplement your coal power. Your coal power can push you for quite a while, but the extra that you're gonna get from the natural gas is really uh, useful. Next, you're gonna to wanna to find some kind of renewable water source. Hopefully you've already found something like this, but ideally you will have explored a good amount of the map to actually find this. Um, and I put this a little bit later than you might find it in your own run, only because some maps it's really hard to get to. 
And in the walkthrough that I did, it's like way at the bottom of the map. So it took me a little while to get to it, which is why I'm not rushing to get onto anything that requires a lot of water before I'm ready. So by this point it would be where you really need it because you're going to start having higher demands when you need to get into uh, other parts of the game like uh, oxygen for or rather using water to create oxygen or if you wanted to get oil or something like that that might require a lot of extra water. The sources I would really recommend are either of the cool slush geysers or a polluted water vent. Anything else is probably a little bit too hot and we'll have to have another way of cooling it down. So if you're stuck in that kind of position, um, you'll have to just run a temporary solution to cool that water the best you can. Ice is a great thing like we talked about before, but if you can find one that's already relatively cool, like the polluted water vent especially is really good, you should grab that now. All right, next, I'm gonna say dig to the bottom of the map. And what I really mean by the bottom is to the oil biome. Uh, the oil biome on standard, uh, like the first asteroid in the base game, is going to be at the very bottom of the map, except for at the mag the like magma area is going to be right below it. So lots of really valuable stuff is down here, and oil kind of represents the entry into the mid-game where you can start getting more powerful uh, sources of power, and you can start transitioning into more like prepping for the later game and getting on renewable resources and that kind of stuff. So first of all, you just need to get down there. And as you dig downward, you're going to want to lower your ventilation system so that it's pulling all the carbon dioxide that settles down at the bottom of your new areas and kind of gets it out of there so you can make your base as breathable as possible. All right, now let's start our Atmos suits. The Atmos suits are going to be needed before you actually enter the oil biome. So there's a bunch of other purposes these are going to be good for, but you do need a decent amount of refined metal. If you haven't already run something like a Dreco Ranch or uh, started some thimble reeds or something like that, then you will need a source of reed fibers to push these Atmo suits. So if you haven't done that yet, you'll probably want to do it now. Um, ideally, you would have done it a little bit earlier, but there's a lot of natural ways you can find enough reed fibers to get your first 10, 20 suits, depending on what's on your map. So yeah, uh, probably want to get these going now. All right, I talked about this a little bit earlier about salvaging the steel that you can get. This is now a good part to start creating it because we should have some extra power sources. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I wouldn't start worrying about metal refineries until you have a couple of different power sources at minimum. But by this point, we should already have access to petroleum because we've used our Atmo suits uh, to get down to the oil biome. If you have it all flowing, then you can do it now. Or if you don't have it yet, just create a little bit because some of the stuff that we're going to need down in the oil biome might require steel. So you can kind of do this step or the next one in any particular order between the two of them. But this is a good time to start thinking about it, especially because hopefully your natural gas is kind of built up and your coal power is really stable. So, yeah. Like I mentioned, this is when you're going to want to start harvesting your oil area. Um, the reason that I say steel before this typically is because you will want steel for a lot of the buildings that are down here. So if you haven't already produced a bunch of steel off of that, um, then you probably want to do it first. Only because uh, there's a lot of different things that are going to be down here and it's going to get very, very hot. But the, the things that I create down here will definitely require it. So once we do get down here, the oil, petroleum, fossil, diamond, all that kind of fun stuff, it's going to be very powerful for this stage of the game. So get down there and mine it out pretty hard. And then next, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things. Like, first of all, we're going to talk about capturing your metal volcano so you have a renewable source of that. But this is also going to be like the first point that you really start using a lot of steam turbines and aqua tuners and that kind of stuff to keep things cool. Um, as related to the first, or rather the previous step of harvesting your oil area, um, this is also going to require a good amount of steel and these aqua tuners and stuff so that you can create cooling for this metal volcano, but you probably also want to create cooling for your oil area that's going to need to have stuff shipped up through it. So some of these steps kind of happen concurrently. It's a little weird to put them all in order, but yeah. Anyway, once you get to this point, uh, capturing your metal volcano is going to be pretty important because you're going to need a lot of refined metal for later in the game. And regardless of what kind of metal it is, it's really good to capture that volcano because refining it is very expensive. And sometimes on some maps, your me your metal can be very, very poor, meaning that it's hard to get it anyway. So anything coming out of like a geyser or a vent or a volcano, you can basically consider a free resource that you might as well take advantage of. So this is really good. 
All right, next, we talked about the very bottom of the map being the magma biome. This is where your power needs are going to really skyrocket because by this point you're going to have a lot of needs to uh, power your aqua tuners. And aqua tuners in particular are very expensive. Um, you'll also need to be powering like your metal refinery and a couple of other things that might be taking a lot of power by this stage of the game because your base is going to get really big. So the magma that's sitting down here, it's extremely hot, but I would just view anything that's just extremely hot as just free power. So go get it. Uh, it's kind of a complicated setup, but at this point, this is kind of like the late gamey area that we're entering. Uh, kind of need to be more comfortable with getting into places that don't seem very uh, hospitable for your duplicates. And this in particular can power you for pretty much the rest of the game. Um, you obviously don't want to use a ton of power if you don't have to, but something like this can push quite a bit. All right, I'm finally just going to put this here. Um, I know I've talked about the Aqua Tuner and Steam Turbine a few times already, but this is kind of like the time where if you don't have a typical cooling loop to cool a whole bunch of the other areas that you have, like your metal refinery area, uh, anything else that might require cooling inside your base, such as something around like your food, if your food is subjected to too much heat, this is where I would definitely add more aqua tuners, more steam turbines so that you can keep everything cooled down. And as long as you have all the power steps that we talked about before, which was the coal, natural gas, petroleum, and the magma power down at the bottom, or geothermal power, whatever you want to call it, um, you should be able to push a lot of these. So this would be about the time where I would be thinking, okay, I have a good buildup of plastic, I have a good buildup of steel, I really need to get onto this industrial strength type of stuff that'll push me to the rest of the game. All right, now finally, we're gonna talk about producing oxygen from water. This is because you will now finally have um, a good amount of water flow, ideally. And like I mentioned, some of these steps can be a little bit out of order depending on what your play is. But in the walkthroughs that I did, this was the time that I did it, only because we were kind of running a little bit low on polluted water by this point, but it also made sense because we're gonna need the hydrogen production. Um, we will also want to be on continuously renewable resources as much as we can. So if we can produce the oxygen from the water and kind of get some more power out of it because of the hydrogen generators, we might as well. So this is about where I did it here. You could do it a little bit earlier, but at minimum I would not do it before you have very reliable cooling and very reliable water. Um, those are kind of the two things that are under threat here. People like to talk about the power surplus that you'll get from this a lot, but ultimately you still do need the cooling and the water to be able to push this. And I see it uh, cause a lot of trouble for people if they don't do that first. All right, now this is the last biome we're going to enter, which is the space biome. Obviously the last objectives of the game are to uh, breach the temporal tear and uh, build the Great Monument. The Great Monument you can really do domestically, but breaching the Temporal Tear, you gotta get out into the space biome first. And yeah, there's like meteors and all kinds of junk out here that's really hot. So uh, it can be a little bit of a process to get out there, but this is about the part where I would do it. Just make sure you have reliable cooling, like I mentioned before. Make sure you have a lot of refined metal, because you're gonna need that to deal with the asteroids that are out there. But yeah, let's get out there and uh, get some progress going. Now is time to be thinking about our rocket launching pad. Uh, like I mentioned, you need to launch rockets out there to start making progress in space, and I have a build that's in my walkthrough just about this, which is basically like, when your rockets launch, it's gonna produce a tremendous amount of heat. I might as well just take that heat and turn it back into power if I can, and also just kind of insulate the rest of my base from it so that it doesn't cause any problems. I also don't really want to build my rockets too far away, otherwise my duplicates waste a lot of time running back and forth. So I'd rather kind of build it close to the center of my base if I can, and then just have the whole area that the rockets are going to be launching in exposed to space, because who cares if the rockets blast off and a bunch of steam or carbon dioxide or whatever leaks into space, it's not a big deal. But uh, as long as it's nearby, I can be efficient, and as long as I have a way to capture the heat, then we're kind of running at a little bit of a surplus sort of. It at least helps, but it also helps uh, if you have that doubled up as like your aqua tuner area for cooling and it's going to be valuable in just a second too. Obviously next we need to start launching our rockets. So on the uh, map here there's some places that you need to go to get databanks so that you can get further into the research tree. Also afterwards it's going to be important for you to be looking for a resource that will help you produce super coolant. 
Uh, the resource is called Fullerene. It only exists on a few asteroids that are nearby. But in my walkthroughs, I do mention how you can build these rockets that will head to those asteroids and bring some of those resources back. Then once you have Fullerene, you can start producing the super coolant and finally get to the very last stages of the game. Speaking of super coolant, what you're really going to need for that is to liquefy hydrogen with it. As far as I know, this is really the only way to do it. Um, I can't think of another way to do it, at least not without mods or anything like that, but super coolant is going to be very useful for getting liquid hydrogen because the most powerful rocket there is is a hydrogen rocket. And liquid hydrogen is ridiculously low temperature, so we will need that before we can start running any of the later missions, but really, especially in the base game, you only need to run one to the temporal tear, so as long as you can produce at least a decent amount of liquid hydrogen, you're going to be fine. Alright, here we are. This is the last step, and like I just mentioned, you should be able to get to the temporal tear by this point if you have enough liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen for the uh, rocket fuel and that kind of stuff. And as long as you get there, and as long as you can build the monument and kind of check all the boxes, then you've pretty much done everything that the game is telling you to do. So I'm just going to consider that a victory. I think you win if you get to that point in the game, because there's not really anything else the game is asking you to do after that. So, yeah, that was pretty much it. Um... Let me know what you thought about this idea. I may do this for some other asteroid types or for spaced out or something like that. This was something that I had people asking for here and there, just like a quick condensed like path that you would take to completing the game. So I don't know, I threw it together and uh, <laughs> let me know what you think about it if you find this type of thing valuable. Uh, also, I'll be back with a lot more videos here really soon. Spaced out walkthrough should be coming up right after this in the next couple days. So thanks for watching and I will see you back here really soon.